Uh, we, this is Into the Mist. Welcome. Um, this is the Dice and Dre After Party, where we are going to talk about Dice and Dre, this last week's episode, and other various things. Jen, and welcome, and thanks for the subscription. And uh, we are going to kick it off and welcome in Brave, play Sprocket. I'm playing Crethen. And we can say whatever we want here because Jeff's not here. Hello. Hello. All right. So um, you absolutely have zero plan for this because uh, I sprung this on you like right now. That's pretty accurate. Yes. <laughs> All right. So what I thought we would do is we are starting a brand new season of Dice and Dreary and... Um, uh, yeah, the upcoming season is going to be a little bit different than the uh, than the prior season, and so I thought it might be fun to do a little bit of an after show discussion, um, where you know go as short as long as needed, uh, just to kind of uh, give give our thoughts on things from the players' point of view. Okay. So, are we covering the upcoming season or the past season? Uh, whatever. Both and. But yeah, this is the first time we're doing this, and so we'll probably uh, probably spend a bit more time on the past season uh, this time than uh, upcoming season or the upcoming season in future episodes. But um, you know, I, I kind of envision it as uh, discussing. The latest episode, primarily. But like I said, since this is the first time we've done this, uh, we we'll probably um, probably will talk a little bit about uh, you know just um, the, the randomness of, of of all things dice and dreary. Okay. So um, we're at the point, and I think. Um, if, if you're here and you have not listened to season one, I don't think this is going to be a huge spoiler, but we didn't die more than once. And that's combined. That's combined, right. That was a very good season. Um, and uh, we, we actually, in the, the, uh, the, the ending of, of season one, when we were um, facing off with some werewolves, uh, we actually did extremely well, and it was kind of fun. <laughs> there was an extreme case of deja vu involved there. But... <laughs> yeah, it was a super fun fight. Yeah, we uh... <laughs> and behind the scenes, um, we did that fight twice. Uh, there's there's actually been a couple of episodes where we've had um, recording troubles, but. This is the only time that we've had to re-record everything, and we did. Um, and to uh, and to Jeff's credit, we weren't like we weren't like trying to like uh, just recreate the battle that happened. We did a whole new fight. It was different. It was. So that was pretty cool. And yet, I managed to pull off the same tricks I wanted to. <laughs> I I rolled I like I rolled really well the first time we did that fight and I rolled even better the second time we we did that fight and so I was pretty darn pleased with uh, with both times. Well the first time I got to knock a group of wolves off the wall not once but twice. Oh, that was hilarious too. Like they climbed and... they climbed all the way back up and right when they got to the top you just knocked them over again. It was amazing. Yeah, and I almost want to know what Jeff was thinking when I, for, when I did it the second time. Like, oh, what? Really? It was, it was so good, though. But then, in our second recording, he let me get away with it again, so... Yeah, no, it was it was fantastic. Yeah, it was really good. Um, and so, uh, like... Yeah, one, thing, one thing people are going to notice, like, when they listen to the first episode of Season 2, is there's there's definitely a change of tone even though we're in the same spot and there's a reason for that and I mean it, kind of one of the advantages we've had was that we we've played so far in advance like we, we kind of know where things are going to end up 
you know, as the editing process is happening. And so, like, the reason the, the second half of season one was so upbeat musically is because, it's like, everything we did was just, you know, like, rolling 20s all over the place. And and we, we, we totally looked like just, you know, all, these awesome characters that could do no wrong. And so that was reflected in the music. Um, and I, you know, I... I I kind of feel like season one was split in between like that um, getting our bearings and realizing that we're, you know, we're in a dangerous situation in the first half and then really like starting to accomplish stuff in the second half. Um, but season two is very much about feel, feeling the weight of like <laughs> all the just horrible things coming, you know, going on around us. And so, um, it, it has it has a bit of a darker tone, but um, yeah, that that season one ending the way it did uh, let um, let us have some like really upbeat and, and uh, uh, actually parts of just hilarious episodes. Yeah, you make a good point. We certainly as characters did well. Mm -hmm. uh, it was more of a dumb luck situation, I think, though. Oh, yeah, well... Because things didn't yeah. go our way, and yet we just kind of stumbled into success. Yes. Yes. Which <laughs> is really perfect for Sprocket. Well, yeah, and I don't, you know... Um, I, I mean, I think Crethen has an inkling that... It's okay. So, like in the in the season finale, season one, when when Crethen just starts shooting randomly into the dark and he keeps hitting werewolves, I think Crethen knows that that's dumb luck. I don't think Crethen thinks that that's a skill, uh, <laughs> uh, or or at least you know at least part of his brain keeps reminding him. It's like you, you know, you know that was just chance, right? Um, but uh, yeah, what what I kind of one of the things I I. I I love about Sprocket is when those things happen, you know, you're not, I'm, I'm not clear on whether Sprocket thinks he did that or if Sprocket is, thinks that that was just random. Does that make sense? Are you, it does. Now, are you looking for insight or? I'd, I'd love some insight on that. Well, too bad. <laughs> Uh, for that's okay, part, so part of the sprocket charm, right? Jen is asking, you never actually, know what he's thinking or why he does what he does. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's um, uh, this doesn't give anything away from the novel, uh, anything plot-wise. But there's a point in the novel that somebody comes up to Sprocket and asks him, "Did did you realize all of this was going to happen like this? Is that why you did what you did?" And Sprocket's answer is, well, you know how it goes. And then just leaves. <laughs> and I love, it's actually my favorite Sprocket moment from the, from the book. Um, Jen asks foreshadowing clues in the music. And there, yeah, absolutely. There's absolutely uh, foreshadowing in the music. Um, uh, so uh, the first half of season one, it was, I, I, I kind of had, I kind of had a, um, a sound in mind, but I, I was, I was, I was writing the music as we were recording. And so it, it doesn't have that consistency. The second half, the, the Kresik part of season one, everything was composed after we had already played the entire season out. And it, so I knew exactly what was happening. And um, the music gets upbeat right away. And that's, and it stays that way the whole season. I, I like I like having that, that kind of consistency of sound. So, um, if you listen to the sound design, uh, both of the special effects and the music in season one, uh, I'm sorry, episode one of season two, it's going to give you an idea of the way, the way the next segment is going to go. Um, and yeah, season two is 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 quite a bit darker. Yeah, and wait till we get into the disco section and the music. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> so, um, um, there, uh, we actually did have some other questions from Jen that we'll be happy to answer if we are able. Um, uh, do you guys plan out any of the story ahead of time because you're doing a show or is it all 
on the fly uh, decisions dialogues uh, like a typical game um, so I that's think a good question it, it's a really good question in it and um, I think that I think the answer is honestly going to be different for all three of us Jeff included uh, do you how much do you like like uh, it, it I mean I've talked to you in between recording sessions on um, just ideas but how, how much how much do you like think about like you know what's what, what might be cool for sprocket to do next well i think jeff does the same thing we do to him like he'll plan a whole session and then we totally go off the rails yeah and then we'll end a session on a cliffhanger and you and i will talk about oh what should we do how should we handle this <laughs> yeah yeah and then jeff totally takes us in a different direction anyway yeah yeah yeah, yeah that happens actually that happens a lot um, there have, uh, so I would say cr on Crethen's end, uh, 95% of it is just on the fly. You know, we, uh, D Jeff does not tell us what's coming up next, you know, what, what puzzles might be, uh, like, uh, I mean, when we got to the wizard's tower, um, and we mentioned this in the in the uh, the post mortem to that episode, which if you are uh, if you're a patron of the show, you have access to. But um, there's a puzzle on the door of the <laughs> of the tower, and I it, and I Crethen was the one in front of it, and I was just staring at it, and I could not make out any of this. I think I pulled out the oh, there we go. I couldn't make out any of it, and. Um, and I, I messed it up and I electrocuted myself. And like the next day I looked at it with, with actually these glasses on. And I was like, oh, I just wasn't wearing my glasses. And um, it's so, it's like, yeah, I had, uh, I, you know, we, we don't get advanced notice of any puzzle, of any, of, of, you know, any dungeon, any, any enemy, um, really. Um, we do, in, in between sessions, I like, Crethen will I, I mean I will think through what Crethen's response might be and there are there are certain moments that I I thought about well well ahead of time there's a lot more moments that I thought about well ahead of time but never happened because the situation just didn't present itself um, the only time that I remember that we actually discussed a plot point actually happens in this episode and that is because, and um, uh, if if you don't want to get spoiled for the last part of the episode, then then turn it off. But um, uh, turn us off for I don't know three minutes. Uh, and, but all right, I'm uh, cutting out for three minutes. Right. right. <laughs> um, <laughs> at that at that uh, at the end of the prior episode, when when Crethen was was bitten by a werewolf. I really thought Crethen's response would be to further isolate himself by leaving. And we discussed it beforehand. Um, and you uh, you thought it was a bad idea. And um, we uh, we took it we, we kind of took it to Jeff because it's like um, I, in general, I think I, you know. I think if any player's gonna like split a party in Dungeons and Dragons, it's it's a. I mean, I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea, but I do, I do in general think that's a good thing to talk about beforehand, because uh, that can kind of really make your game wonky, and especially with the DM, because that could really just kind of uh, <laughs> screw over the DM's prep. Um, but uh, we, we actually discussed that ahead of time as to what was going to happen there and what happens there won't be until next episode. So I won't explain what was decided, but I think that's the only plot point we've ever like sat down and, and agreed on. Um, I can't think of, Oh, the, no, the, the other one, Jeff and I did uh, when, when Crethen died uh, against the vampires in season one, um, Jeff, uh, uh, Jeff did talk to me about what was going to happen to him. And if, Crethen as a character would be, you know, would be okay with it, and, and we went from there. But uh, most of the time, yeah, we don't plan that out. Can you think of another time? I don't think of any. I don't think so. We discussed uh, the meeting with the count 
pretty extensively. Mm -hmm. And then none of our plans ended up coming to fruition. Yeah, no, that ha that, that happens a lot. I I I, I annoy the snot out of you sometimes with uh, <laughs> the, the messages. It's like, all right, I'm thinking about this, and what if it happens like this? And you're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, in, gen in general, I, I very much over, over plan my characters. Um, I'm, I'm learning, I'm getting better at that, that though, I think. You do okay, tend to get hooked on one thing. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the upcoming season, there was a situation where, as we just found out, Jeff ended up misspeaking. Oh, you, yes! You caught on to that and just kept berating uh. that fact. Uh, I can't wait for that episode because yeah, I was like him misspeaking is going to throw Crethen off for a long time. And as Sprocket, he just didn't care. Right. Yeah. <laughs> which, which turned out to be the right thing to do. Cause I, yeah, and we didn't know until very recently that, um, yeah, it was just, it was just misspeaking. It was, it was really interesting. Um, um, how much of the uh, question, how much of this is original Jeff content and how much is taken out of the book? Um, in the postmortems, we go into a, a lot of detail on on this, on this particular topic, because um, that's a that's a huge, actually a huge part of postmortem is to figure out what Jeff is thinking in, in different dungeons. And so um, anybody who is a patron has access to those. I'll say in general, uh, from what he's told us. Death House is nearly completely by the book. Um, he did reduce the, the number of shadows from like six to one, and it still almost killed us. <laughs> but... Well, we are running with just a two-person party, yeah. too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, you got to cut got to cut stuff like that down. Um, Kresik is 100% Jeff. Uh, it, like, I... I uh, he told us, uh, or he, I don't know if he told you, but he told me at least what was in the original. That original section is nothing like Kresik in uh, in our game. Um, but uh, he had a he had a cool idea, and it turned out to be a really cool idea. I loved I loved the whole Kresik se segment. Yeah, and, uh, and well, I think he did a lot of that to pull Sprocket in. Yes, and and, and yes, it was great. It was a uh, it was really effective in that too. Um, uh, yeah, in it, uh, yeah, that whole segment really gave, gave you a chance to shine in that role. And I think you did, um, which was, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, Velaki was very much accidentally, uh, uh, you know, Hey, here's a bunch of problems Crethen has, you know, dreaming about his, ex-girlfriend who tries to drown him that gets, gets himself killed um <laughs> all of that um and so it was uh it was cool just having the next segment be much more geared to uh, uh sprocket's character and personality yep and i know uh, we had discussed a few things with jeff about how the whole Kresik thing would play out as well. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he filed those for the future because we haven't seen a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. So, um... But it yeah, is always fun a... to break the DM when you get the big <laughs> boss fight. I'm like, oh, I have the one spell that will take him out, no problem. All right, let's do that. Oh, gosh, that was and great. Like, oh, really? <laughs> that was so good. Um... Yeah, that uh, that fight was really really fun. <laughs> so, um, how much is cut? Is there a blooper reel out there somewhere, or does Jeff pretty much keep all of it? Um, he cut one severe blooper, and this was hilarious. Uh, from this last episode. Um. So when the Dusk Elf, uh, I can't remember that cat's name, the, uh, the, the messenger. Uh, Reuven. No, 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 the, uh, the messenger from Strahd. The one that comes oh. up in the carriage. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I forgot his name. Anyways, uh, he... I haven't listened to this episode yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
It's only been like six months since we recorded it. Come on. I know. I'm on vacation, so I was saving it for when I get back to work. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, Strahd sends a Dusk Elf by carriage to come invite us to dinner with Strahd, essentially. And he says that he has a message from the Count. And I say, as Grethin, what Count? <laughs> and he says, Count von Zarevich, who is Strahd. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I was looking at my notes at um, the name of... of I think it was um, the ruler of Velaki or somebody. No, 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 no. It was um, uh, the name that Strahd goes by when he's um, wandering around uh, Velaki. I forgot. I forgot the name right now. And I thought he said that name instead of Arnzarovich, who is that's Strahd's name, Strahd von Zarovich. And I said. Something like, you know, isn't that the guy from Balaki? And, like, everybody was just, like, really quiet. And I'm like, yeah, like, uh, is, uh, isn't that, like, uh, like that, that Duke or something from Balaki? And Jeff finally is like, Strahd von Zarovich. And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you can cut that out. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> uh, and I don't know why. That was just a brain fart on my end. Um. But normally, uh, normally goofs, he leaves in. Yeah, I remember you had a brilliant Crescent moment back in Velaki when you were wanting to make some uh, wooden stakes to deal with the vampires. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, don't you, like, carry arrows with you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was great. He left that in, right? Yeah, I think he did. Yes, he did. Um... And my, my very, very favorite, and I told him to leave this one in, is when we were when we were coming up on Balaki, and um, I uh, <laughs> I was trying to eat, introduce Irina, and I was like desperately looking through my notes, and I finally called her Irina uh, Koyanovich, and she said Koyana, and I said no, it's Koyanovich. I'm looking at my notes right here. <laughs> <laughs> we had like this little mini our, and she finally she's like you know um, our, our last names don't work the same way here as it does for you and I was like oh that's your brother's last name <laughs> oh so uh, he did leave that in and that was that was a great Crethen just sticking his foot in his mouth moment uh, which I loved she was not impressed with us at all for for a very long time that could be said about everyone that meets us. <laughs> now, Esmeralda was probably like, oh, what have I gotten into? I know. Oh, gosh. But again, it always works out for us. I know. I, well, I, and I, lo I love that it did work out that way, that we were just complete buffoons in front of Irina for the first several days of our, jo of our voyage until all of a sudden... And this is what I mean when I say, like, the first half of season one is just, you know, is us just being lost in this world. And then the second half is us really being competent, like really competent. Um, and just the dice all of a sudden started going our way and, and kept going our way for the rest of the season. Um, and I, I really like that it worked out like that because it, it, it gives it gave the characters an arc to you know being you know being the buffoon foreigners to uh yes these people really do have a chance of winning this thing and then we're going to enter season three where um it's not necessarily like you know like the dice just completely turn against us or anything but just the everything that happens in season three is very much along the lines of oh this is going to be harder than we thought it was uh, yeah, season three i'm, I'm in season not. two sorry yeah, intentionally or not, Jeff kind of played that out too with uh, Reuven. When we first met him, he's like, "Yeah, you guys just go hide somewhere because you don't stand a chance." <laughs> right. And then we wiped out Van Weird like nothing. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh wait, what?" Yeah. 
all right, maybe we could do this. <laughs> uh, and, and with the running joke of um, just, like, no one, like, no one has been surprised that, like, you know, the blind guy is running around swinging swords. And I think it's hilarious because Crethen keeps, you know, bringing that up. And, um, uh, and like, you know, it's like, does this not, you didn't notice this? <laughs> and, but, uh, yeah, I think this, uh, turns out to be really funny. Yeah, even in your novels, no one really, you just kind of, ah, whatever. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the, uh, the townspeople do, uh, uh, do try to jump him when they figure out that he's, uh, he's not, he's not right. There's something wrong with that guy. But yeah, that's the only thing that happens to it. So, um, yeah, is there anything else we want to say about uh, the forthcoming season two? Um, I don't know. It is a lot more, like you said, dreary. <laughs> I, yeah, and I think, and I think in a really good way because. Um, yeah, Kresik, uh Kresik turned the game much more adventure than it did horror, and um, season two course corrects a little bit on that. I think I think it's a very good way. I think that whole situation has kind of bummed Jeff out though, because he wanted to do a horror and we just didn't go for it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I well, I mean, we get there. Like, I'm sorry, I created a crazy gnome. That just doesn't understand horror. When when did things started started getting unraveled? Because uh, I mean, Death House was a really good like horror adventure, and I'd even say like uh, 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 the Village of Barovia, you know, maintained that. Um, but even that, just our personalities, we were just kind oh of, yeah. I mean yeah, you know, the dagger thing getting <laughs> forgotten. Yeah. That was, that was good. And then uh, uh, I remember opening the doors in the death house. Like, hey, can I borrow your sword for a second? Then I used oh, it to pry the door open. Yeah, that's right. That was good. Uh, yeah, there are a lot. There are a lot of just really, really funny moments in in death house, um, and in and in the 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 the, the village of Barovia. Um, but I think we do kind of just completely knock it off the rails. Uh, it might be when we were being chased by that uh, that guard in in Velaki, and um, yeah, you know fun. I I pretend to be sick uh, in order to to help you escape, and then you don't. <laughs> well, he asked me a question, and I just keep answering. It. <laughs> yeah, he's telling yeah, me to was... shut up. I was like, "Well, you wanted to know, right?" Yeah, that was so good. Um, but yeah, I think I. I, I it, all of that, I think, really works to have a flow to the show, and um, I'm I, I I really honestly I can't wait for you to hear the new episode because the way the sound effects and the music come together in it um, really helps kind of kind of well as Jim was saying foreshadowing the season a little bit and um, uh, letting us. Kind of, kind of hint that you know that that things are shifting in the in the game, um, but I, I really do like the flow of that and uh, and kind of where the where the game goes in this season. And yeah, so yeah, um, I guess that's. That's really all that I had planned to bring up. Um, I think uh, this our our remaining time in Kresik, um, I think has a lot of really fun and really cool points to it, and, um, and then we we will be off in not too much longer. Uh, actually, I think it's possibly next episode has. One of my very, very favorite moments in the game. And it's one that I planned on 
um, for a while, uh, even though I, I wasn't sure how how Jeff was going to play it out once once we sprung it on him. <laughs> and and uh, I, I really like the way that it turns out. But I think that's next episode. And then, um, yeah, we're going to be off and going and trying to, you know, uh, collect collect a bunch of stuff and, you know, possibly um, cure some, uh, some werewolves. We go from there. Yep. So... Any other thoughts before we sign off? Um, I will spoil. There is a uh, maybe another guard battle coming up that is <laughs> super fun. Oh, that one's great. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really good. Um, that one didn't go any way that could have been predicted. Oh no, that. But it was fun. Yeah, it like yeah, everything about that battle just turned out to be a lot of fun. That that that's actually a moment that's more of a, you know, season one moment that <laughs> that lingered over. But I'm so glad it did because it was a lot of fun. Um, and again, Jeff was a good sport and just let us get away with it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so um, any uh, while we're while we're here, I I know. Jen's been chatting. Anybody uh, in chat have any questions that um, we might be able to tackle while we are here? Uh, Jen asked if we change the tone on purpose. Change the tone of um, uh, like of season two? Uh, not on our end. Well, kind of. Okay, kind. Okay, so part of this, part of this, I'm gonna have to tell next next time in two weeks uh, because there's some stuff that happens in the next episode that um, that really set Crethen on a path but I, I mean, to an extent I, I mean to an extent it's like you know Crethen has just acquired yet another curse <laughs> And uh, one that has more immediate ramifications. And, you know, we're now under a time limit. And um, I think that uh, that we have an understanding that like 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 for the very fact that Strahd sent a messenger to where we were and knew where we were, that kind of puts uh, just um this mood over the over the adventure that that we know that, um, hey, he's he actually knows a lot more than we think he does, and so there there's certain aspects like that that we, um, I think uh, I think we realized it was going to be a bit more serious and a bit more time crunchy, um, but uh, a lot of it we didn't know, like it was it was going to be. The places we were going, and that that we couldn't know, um, that helped. That some of it had to do with dice rolls, and uh, some of it just had to do with decisions that we're but we're gonna make that um, just aren't aren't very clear cut, and just you know trying to make the best of situations. And so I think Jeff had a lot of that plan, but uh, I didn't. And I'd like to point out that Sprocket was all for accepting the dinner invite. Yeah. Yeah. And they are that um that's going to come up more. And so yeah, there's a there's a couple of aspects to this season that um we I, I mean our characters have not disagreed all that much. We agree. We disagreed on what to do with the uh, the coffin maker, because uh, Crethen didn't want to face the vampires. Crethen wanted to burn it down, and Sprocket did not. But I think that was really the only point of disagreement in season one. But there's 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 more disagreement in season two, as to between the characters, which I honestly think is good. You know. Yep. I think it. Uh, it it deepens the characters and and puts some some real conflict because yeah I mean we're we're called on to make decisions that are not clear at all, which is uh which is very uh, very cool. 
Um, so yeah, um, and we uh, we will uh, put this up on YouTube. I if rave is game, then I you know I'd like to keep doing this because I think it might be fun to just kind of uh, as we go uh, as the episodes come out to have uh, the, the kind of players thoughts on on it and things so i'll put you on the spot no i don't want to do that okay <laughs> <laughs> no this is good cool i actually get to talk and stuff it's weird I, you almost talked in this episode i mean in, in like this stream not uh, probably more than i'm allowed to in the uh, actual oh <sighs> Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> tough, <laughs> tough, but fair. All right, cool. Well, we will, uh, we're going to sign off here. And um, uh, Jen and anybody else who joined us, thanks so much for joining us. And um, I think, I think y'all are going to like season two. I like season two. Um, I'm, I've been working on music for season two and I really like the music for season two also. And so, um, I'm really pumped about where things are going and uh, I'm pumped because uh, at some point we're going to start recording season three. Was, we, we have, rec we've, we've recorded season two, but we have not started season three uh, recording wise. Yep. And so uh, I'm, I'm anxious to get back into actually playing as well. It'll be fun. <laughs>